Hi, this is Joe Hilder from My Heap, and uh, in our last video, we, or I, I guess I should say I, uh, disassembled the apron and uh, had some parts that uh, had some issues going on with it. Uh, with a crack, uh, you know, there's a there's just a little crack over here in the casting here, which I think will be fine because this is under compression. This is not like it's got any lateral stress on it. And then uh, remember, I said that. Um, um, I had problems with the oilers being painted and then the knob that was um, on the half nuts lever looked like it was all peened in. So since then I found some replacement parts and in this video I want to get this back together. So hopefully this uh, won't be a long video um, but we'll just methodically work our way through it and uh, if, it's, if I think it's going to take too long we'll just make it into um, more parts. So anyway um, I'm going to start with the, uh, remember the, the Gitz Oilers. I've done some research on here. These are Gitz GB00520 uh, Oilers. I think they're right around 3 16 They're a light press fit uh, into, uh, into these bores. Now to get these out, uh, what's kind of interesting, I want to give a, a shout out to Art Eckstein for his tip uh, on getting these out. This one here was really kind of easy. I could get a punch back here in the back and drive it up and out. But see, the other two are in these bores and I couldn't get them. So what I ended up doing was taking a drywall screw and forcing it into the ball um, so it wedged in there. And then uh, took the casting, put it upside down like this here with a pair of pliers holding onto the screw, right? And then tapping the pliers and, and tapping these out. So. Um, I was able to find, uh, new, well first of all I replaced them because they were painted over when I scraped them up. I had one ball that stuck down and I couldn't figure out why and, and, uh, but once I pulled it out I noticed that the hole was still plugged so you know these, these holes were pretty dirty so they're all cleaned out and figure this way it's just simpler to start with new parts. So these uh, oilers are still available. I bought these, I bought three replacements from applied.com uh, they were two dollars and I think 45 cents a piece um, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in now these are a light dry fit so let's see if I can get them in here without too much havoc and if it's gonna be too much havoc uh, driving them in then I'll uh, stop the video and I'll, I'll go to my bench out in my shop and dry them in and go from there so um, With it lined up there, I'm just going to use a punch. Now it will depress the ball, but that's okay. And I'm just going to tap these into place. Let's see, hopefully you can see me here. So. Alright, so there's that one. And let me get the other two. get them in place here. Okay, so those are in, and uh, let's carry on. Uh, oops, let's carry on with uh, assembling the uh, apron here. So with the new oilers in, remember I said there were basically you know three sections to the to the apron. You know you have the have the section over here which is the half nuts. You have the section over here which the lead screw uh, drives the. Um, the cross feed and um, then the section over here which you know handles the gears for the for the uh, traversal so we're going to start in the middle 
now hopefully uh, this will go fairly smooth the um, um, first part that we want to install here is the pull knob for the um, uh, for the uh, cross feed um, and inside this here there's a, a spring and a ball and the spring will fit let me just get a little oil on here and by the way you know I was asking about oil cans I did get me some oil cans <clears throat> these are actually kind of nice they're wide base they don't fall over so um, I'm quite pleased with that so and I'm gonna cheat here just a little bit oh, thunder screwdriver So I can thread this down on this hole, just like that. Now this is going to be the tough part. There's a little ball here, and uh, hopefully I don't lose this. If I do, I'm going to have to go out and buy some. This is a 3 16th ball. We'll sit on top of this spring. So I want to try to get that balanced up there on the spring, just like that. I guess hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to slide the shaft in uh, on top of the ball. I want to kind of push down and then I'm going to take a screwdriver and I know I can't show you this. I'm going to take a screwdriver here and push the ball down hopefully and get this started in here. Alright, just like that. So that of course is the detent for the in and out position okay and then comes the handle handle has a um, small sixteenth inch pin so let's get this on here and hopefully you can see get it lined up let's see if we can get that tapped in there okay so that part is in easy peasy right okay so next uh, we have the spacer, a shim, that goes in behind this gear. Now, you know, in the parts diagram they show two different sizes of shim. They show one a two and a three thousand shim. And I don't know if the shim is to set the uh, gap on the bevel gears or if it's actually part of the alignment for um for the lead screw um where it would come over into the change gear box because i had a user comment about uh, some alignment issues so and then on top of that we have <coughs> the bearing for the let's call it the lead screw the lead screw bevel gear and remember, I, I think I told you in the last video that I ordered this one off of uh, off of eBay because mine was worn out. But something that I wanted to uh, point out, um, I pulled this apart, and you see there's this little uh, groove that when you push oil through this, gets oil, or it should run down this groove and into this bearing. Well, this actually had no hole in uh, in this bushing here, so um, it was doing nothing so I went ahead and I drilled this uh, hole through the bushing and then deburred it so you know that it, we can get some oil so this uh, goes this way with the flat side facing um, the hole here and then that gets a bolt
believe that was a 9 16 it is okay that's snugged in okay and then next comes the lead screw bevel gear get some oil on that And then on the back here is a lock collar. So we'll get that in place. And we'll lock that in. So, so far, so good. All right. And then finally, the last part of this assembly is uh, the gear, the bevel gear that drives the the cross feed gear, and to get this in, just got to slide this, engage it into both gears, get the shaft in. Let me get a little oil in here. I got you in frame. <clears throat> All right, and then on the back side of that is this 11 16 jam nut. All right, so the lead screw. Turns the bevel gear, bevel gear runs the crossfeed gear. Okay. Alright, so that's uh, that's that part of the uh, lead screw together. And so the next assembly we're gonna work on um, is the uh, half nuts. So let me uh, let me pause the camera, let me get the parts for the half nuts ready, and then we'll go and start with that. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I got all the parts out for uh, the half nuts, and let's put these together. So we're going to start with the carriage here and the half nuts. Now, notice that the carriage, I call this the carriage, right, because it, it holds the or a guide or whatever, it holds the half nuts. Um, but you'll notice on the back that there's a hole. This hole is where the uh, ball bearing will go through and the detents um, will engage. So first thing you need to do to install the half nuts is... Uh, is uh, we'll take the half nut, slide it in position like so. So maybe we should get some oil on there. Oh, this is a goldenrod can, by the way, and I uh, I kind of like it. It's it uh, pumps quite easy. Seems to hold its prime. Okay, so anyway, we're going to put this hole up as we insert the um, half nut. And then in the back, you'll see that there's two holes in the half nut, right? The center hole is for a pin, a threaded pin that will engage in what I call the uh, cam lever, right? And then this hole is uh, what the ball pops into to set the detent. So let me just snug that in real quick. You don't have to be super tight or anything, just just snugged. And then we'll put the other half nut in. And guys, I know I uh, stammer and stutter a lot in these things. I don't mean to. I'm just not much of a public speaker, but I sure enjoy the interaction um, from my fellow YouTube creators, my subscribers, and I appreciate the comments and the questions. I can't believe how much I've learned from you guys. And uh, my intention is to uh, take my YouTube shop student um, uh, playlist and, and start adding that here soon. So we're just going to snug this in. Okay, so there's the nuts are in place. This will be at the top. So what we're going to do now is I, I just have some uh, grease here. This is just high pressure grease here. Uh, I think any grease is fine. I'm just going to take a dab of this. And I'm going to stick it in the hole 
where the ball goes just uh, just to retain the ball so this again is a 3 16 ball so if we'll stick it on here and don't lose it and we're just going to poke it in that hole just like that and then uh, we're going to take the cam part and we're going to slide it through this bore right here I don't want to get a little bit on here too. All right, so now here's the challenge. The challenge is um, I want to align these here so these are kind of further outmost. This is where the spring will come through to contact the ball. So what we want to do is open the half nuts up and get this on here and engaged. Okay, and then once that's in place, you can verify that everything's good. We're just holding it up against the casting, and we see that the half nuts actuate. So at that point, let's get the two screws in here. And these are Philister head uh, Phillips screws. If I can hit the hole, story of my life there. Okay, so now the half nuts are in place. It will attach the handle. Remember the handle that I had was uh, slid on the shaft and looked like the shaft was peened over. But you know, I filed on that shaft, so I don't know if it was an older design or what. There was no pin going through, okay? You could definitely tell it was peened over. Different style handle, different than what... Um, um, I've seen in the parts list, right? But uh, this works, seems to work quite well. So I'm going to open up the uh, the half nuts, okay? Just so that I know, get the orientation, I know that it should go up there like that. And we'll get the screw in. Alright, I'm going to wipe this grease off my screwdriver. So. All right, and we'll get this screw here fastened in. All right, so we can verify that it opens and closes the half nuts. I'm happy with that. Now we need to set in the spring. Now, now the spring that I had um, was broken and very, very short, probably a quarter inch or, or less. And, I couldn't get enough compression to really set the detent, so that was the problem I was having. Uh, I found another spring uh, in my junk box, and it seems to work fine. It's a little bit skinnier than the one that was in there, but it is it is uh, a bit longer. It's about uh, about a half inch long, so hopefully you can see that. So into the hole with that, and then our set screw. And let's get that in there. Okay, I'm starting to get a detent there. I'm going to screw this in a little bit more. All right, I like that. Okay, so that, uh, that part is... Uh, together so now we're going to work on this last little section so I'm going to get the parts from out uh, out for that and uh, I'll be right back so we've almost got the apron uh, back together so be right back okay so we're back with the parts <clears throat> that uh, handle the 
uh, the traversal along the gear, uh, 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 along the uh, rack that drives the, uh, uh, the whole carriage assembly up and down the lathe. So the first thing we're going to do is um, install the uh, pinion shaft that uh, drives the other gear cluster in first. And the reason why I'm starting with this is because um, this this gear's position is fixed it, it uh, in relationship to the other gears and I want to use this one here to set the gap for the other gears. So I've oiled that shaft. We'll come around over here to the other side. We have a, a um, Woodruff key goes in and of course the handle and then washer and a nut. And if I remember right, this was a funky size, so I'm going to use my crescent wrench here to snug that down. Okay, so that's in place. Now on the back side, now recall that I had th three different um, fasteners in here. I think I had a uh, socket head cap screw over here. I think I had uh, uh, a bolt over here, just regular hex head bolt. And then down here on this side, I think it was a piece of quarter 20 all thread. Um, that was in there with a square nut on both sides. So what should be in here are Philister head screws. Now whether if they're, I would assume that they would be Phillips since that's what these are. Um, but what I bought were um, socket head cap screws. But I have uh, called Fastenal uh, to get some inch and a quarter uh, long, quarter by 20 thread per inch Philister head screws. Uh, they'll be flat, but at least that's closer to what was in here than what I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put these in here simply because <clears throat> um, I want to get it together. It's been a couple weeks since I posted a video, and I just want everybody to see this go back together. So the next time you see this, uh, uh, we'll probably have automatic, auto magically replaced these uh, three screws that I'm getting ready to put in here with uh, the correct ones. Uh, oh, yeah, you know what? Another thing that I wanted to mention, I'm sorry I forgot. When I got this uh, half nut carriage assembly, for lack of a guide or whatever, for lack of a better term, it actually had two pins sticking in it, right? And somebody had said, well, mine's got pins in it. Um, but there were no holes, corresponding holes in the castings to take any alignment pins. Uh, and the other one that I had had these holes but no pins in it. So I went ahead and drove these pins out in order to use this casting. Okay, I just, just wanted to mention that. So anyway, back to this. Sorry guys. Um, remember I told you, I'm not sure why somebody was drilling and tapping holes in this, um, uh, but they did. And uh, there's a couple broken taps in there, but that's where they're gonna live. And this gets mounted here. And if, I don't know if the video will pick it up, but see these, holes here are elongated so there's some adjustment here so what i want to do is i want to get these screws in here uh with the uh, uh square nuts on their uh carriage nuts i think they're called uh just enough to hold it together and then we're going to set this gap and then that's how we're going to uh fasten this in so let me start by getting And carriage nut. Hopefully, this is in frame. Okay, and once it gets so far, obviously, it's not going to. All right. And then we'll get all three in. And the way this casting is designed, it kind of it will catch these uh, carriage nuts and prevent them from spinning. And one thing I will uh, um, note right now is that uh, should have an inch and a quarter um, um, 
bolts in here um, but these are inch and a half so I will actually um, yeah I'm going to replace these I just want to show you how it goes together okay finally the last one here in there Okay, so what I'm going to do is take a strip of, it's just typing paper, just like we've done for the, um, the gears over on the banjo. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to roll this between here, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to mash that up against mash the paper there to set my backlash and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these in and I bet I wasn't smart enough to grab a Allen key maybe I can get it here all right so got that mashed together Gonna snug, gonna snug these. Okay. So those are snugged. I can roll the paper out. So now I have set a uh, an amount of backlash between these gears. So uh, I really meant to count the teeth to see what the uh, gear reduction here was and what the what the travel per revolution was on the uh, saddle. But you know what? I guess after it's all said and done, I can just put a dial indicator and take a look. See, right? So there we have it. The um, the uh, uh, apron is back together. Everything uh, is working. Okay, so there we have it. So uh, in the next episode um, or installment or whatever we want to call these things, I will uh, we'll take a good close look at the uh, saddle and I don't think there's much to do with it. I did get some way wipes. Um, and let's see about getting it together and, and then I think we're getting really, really close guys. I'm just itching to make some chips and hopefully, um, learn how to use this thing. I've been, I spent a lot of time watching, uh, uh, a whole bunch of different people on the, uh, internet. Um, you know, all the usual suspects, uh, Mr. Pete and Keith Finner and, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um doing the stuff a big shout out and thank you to uh chris for uh the the follow-up video that he made for me to show me uh different stuff on his apron the uh, uh the set screw um and spring length uh, for the detent the type of screws that he had in here um the oilers and that sort of stuff and again if you guys uh uh need feel a need to replace your oilers or if you want to replace your orders oilers these are uh these are Gitz, uh, GB Ball Oilers, number 00520, and you can buy them from applied.com. Um, um, I purchased mine. It's not an advertisement. It's just so happened where I found them. Uh, they were about, I think they were $2.43 or $2.45 a piece. Shipping was five or six bucks. Uh, you know, a lot of money for uh, uh, less than an ounce of uh, metal, but hey, where are you going to get them, right? And uh, they're new and, and uh, ready to go. Big thanks and shout out to Art uh, Eckstein for um, pointing out these uh, cans to me with the tips that I need uh, for these ball oilers. Uh, I bought two of them, actually. I bought one uh, for the 20-weight oil, and then I bought uh, another one that I plan to keep uh, 
bar and chain oil that I'm going to use for whey oil. Um, I, it's been suggested by a, a few old timers that that's a, a good oil to use. Um, it's easily accessible. I don't have to go scrounging on the internet unless there's some compelling reason not to use it on the ways. Uh, that's what I plan on using. So if you have uh, some advice or something that you want to suggest or if you want to reinforce that idea, that would be great. Um, so other than that, uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patron patronage. And uh, if for some reason I don't see you for Christmas, um, I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very Merry Christmas. And um, whether if it's politically correct or incorrect, um, God bless you. Remember the reason. Uh, Jesus Christ is the reason. Um, God bless you. And uh, other than that, have a blessed day.